Imagine you log into your online banking one day and your account is completely drained, cleared out by the likes of cyber criminals. Identity theft is on the rise, with real implications for people like you and me. But how do these criminals operate? And how can we protect ourselves from attacks? One way scammers lure in their victims? By impersonating celebrities like Elon Musk. Fraudsters have long tried capitalizing on the name of the US entrepreneur. More on that later. But just recently, a deepfake of Elon Musk was streamed over several hours on YouTube, drawing tens of thousands of viewers. Take a look. You can directly deposit any amount of Bitcoin, Ethereum or Dogecoin. The fake Elon directed people to scan a QR code and transfer cryptocurrency, promising to send back double the amount. The scammers used AI to manipulate the billionaire's face and voice, as well as official-looking Tesla and SpaceX branding. Another recent scam targeted someone less prominent but was hugely political. Deepfakes were created of this Ukrainian student, Olga Loik. Her likeness was used on Chinese social media to promote Russian products and politics. I saw that this is literally like my face speaking Mandarin and on the background I'm seeing Kremlin and Moscow and I'm like talking about things like how great Russia and China are. But there are far less flashy examples of identity theft happening every day. Scammers use fake text or WhatsApp messages to siphon off personal information. Experts at the Hasselblatt Institute in Potsdam explain. Many of these spam or phishing campaigns are geared towards aspects of everyday life. I'm expecting a package, a file's been shared with me, I've been sent a contract. Scenarios that, at first glance, don't seem unusual. Die erstmal nicht ungewöhnlich sind. Like this text message, purportedly from the courier DHL. Clicking on the link redirects you to a web page with a cookie banner. Upon confirming cookie settings, the fake website appears. Upon closer inspection, you'll notice this suspicious URL, a common red flag, and you should exit out immediately. The website looks deceptively real, but if you enter your card details here, you'll have a real problem. And pay attention to the payment methods. Paying in cryptocurrencies isn't a typical option on legitimate websites. Theoretically, the same phishing technique is possible via email, but advancements in spam filters mean it's less common. It's estimated that well over 90% of all emails are spam, but you won't see many of them in your inbox. That's because internet providers have taken very strong measures against spam. So of course the criminals go elsewhere, to social media, messenger services or SMS. So best keep an eye out. Scammers like using services like WhatsApp especially. And the risk of being targeted is increasing too. More and more we're paying for things via smartphone often via social media platforms like Instagram. Payments are often made digitally and direct, with PayPal, for example. This gives scammers an advantage. The phone, it turns out, um, has often more interesting data on it and access to, to more accounts than your computer, especially second factor authentication, mobile banking, all of these are applications running on your phones rather than your computer these days. And of course, if you can, if through a text message, somebody tells you to install a different app that looks exactly like, for instance, the banking app that you used before, um, then they try to steal money that way, right? So scammers don't just make fake websites, they make fake apps too. That said, that is the more time-consuming method, as hackers can really only target individual users. To rake in the big bucks, hackers seek out weak spots in large databases, which can hold huge quantities of highly valuable personal information. One such database belongs to the world's leading ticket sales company, Ticketmaster. I know I've used them, have you? If so, it's probably time to change some passwords. The private data of more than 500 million Ticketmaster customers stolen, according to the hacker group Shiny Hunters. The data allegedly contains names, addresses, telephone numbers and even credit card details. The ticket sales company was reportedly targeted via cloud storage provider Snowflake. The breach is said to have given Shiny Hunters access to data from over 150 international companies. 
10 companies have already been ordered to pay a ransom of at least six figures to see the return of the customer's data. And if you have a spare $500,000 on you, Shiny Hunters is offering to sell Ticketmaster customer data directly on the darknet. You can get anything on the darknet. You can rent anything, buy anything, there's 24-hour customer service, money-back guarantee. You can't imagine how professional it is. There are whole forums where data from identity theft are sold en masse, even given away. Bad for the companies that have been hacked, worse for the users affected. Now your personal data is a commodity on the darknet. Like, for example, these unencrypted invoices from the Motel One hotel chain. Researchers at the Hasso Plattner Institute obtained the records after hackers stole the data in 2023. Not only do they show who stayed with whom and when in which hotel, but they also contain personal data such as addresses and credit card numbers. A credit card might cost a few cents, maybe a dollar. And you'll see, you are just one of many. It's incredibly lucrative for criminals to take a little money into their hands, steal a lot of identities and go on an internet shopping spree. It's as easy as that. Anyone who can skillfully combine pieces of stolen data could sign cell phone contracts, apply for loans, open bank accounts, all under your name. The worst case scenario, victims ultimately have to answer for crimes they didn't even commit. Cybercrime affects more people than you might think. 2013 saw the biggest hack in internet history, with data from all 3 billion Yahoo accounts compromised. Similarly, hackers gained access to more than 1 billion data records at Chinese online shopping giant Alibaba. And it took over a year before the breach was even noticed. Much of the stolen data is sold on the darknet. Hacker groups such as Lockbit 3.0 show off their successes on a leaked data page. Hardly looks like the darknet, does it? If you want to find out whether you've been hacked, you can do so easily online. The Hasso Plattner Institute's Identity Leak Checker, or Have I Been Pwned, are just two websites that collect information on compromised accounts. You just enter your email address to find out. And if you're unlucky enough to have been hacked or even locked out of an account, first and foremost, stay calm. The first thing you want to do is change passwords in all accounts possible. You don't know what the criminal already has access to. So try to change passwords everywhere. Some accounts you might already be locked out of. Don't panic in that case. There really is no stigma anymore about it. Contact the technology provider, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, whoever it is, they all are doing this thousands of times per day, helping people get back into their own accounts. That said, we should take precautions. Protect your identities through good passwords, different passwords, multi-factor authentication. Make it difficult to log into your account so that if somebody tries, they give up and rather go somewhere else. Secondly, have copies of your important data, backups, have physical backups. And Carsten Null's third tip. If you really wanted to protect yourself, get a second SIM card with a number that nobody knows, and you would use that to recover your accounts. And if your data has been part of a breach, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Hackers can get to just about anybody. What do tech giants Bill Gates, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos have in common? All three had their Twitter accounts hacked in one of the most brazen scams in recent years. In 2020, hackers tweeted out questionable investment proposals from numerous celebrities' accounts. They lured users to send Bitcoin and promised to double their investment. To some Twitter users, it seemed like a good opportunity. The scam was quickly uncovered and the culprits were later convicted. Still, the scammers were able to capture Bitcoin worth some 100,000 euros. Harnessing the power of celebrity for get-rich-quick schemes, a match made in scamming heaven. If you can take over a celebrity's Twitter account and tweet some nasty things, you'll, you'll um, cause a lot more confusion than if it's um, an unknown person. And so of course, um, people with either money or high enough of a profile to, to get money 
there is a lot of money to be made from stolen identities. But some countries are affected more than others. In 2022, over 27 million people were victims of identity theft in India. One in three people fear it could happen to them. Cybersecurity expert Saga Vishnoi warns of new threats to our digital identities. Together with the company Inclusive AI, he wants to improve artificial intelligence literacy. Cybercrime in India has seen a significant increase in recent years. From 2022 to 23, there has India has seen an increase of 25% as per the official report in cybercrimes. What is the biggest reason of this much increase is the low digital literacy in India. More than 900 million people have smartphones and digital literacy is still under 10%. Deepfakes are one threat. Audio or video that's been manipulated with the help of AI to imitate a real person. You can be tricked into thinking a person you know is reaching out to you, for example. Cyber criminals can use this technology to cause a lot of damage. One of the examples if I give you about is the CEO of a company in Hong Kong. His voice and face was impersonated by a scammer and the, and the money was transferred to another accountant worth 29 million euros. To prevent such crimes in the future, inclusive AI trains companies, as well as law enforcement agencies and politicians. Female influencers are especially likely to be victims of identity fraud. Another example is women wear their digital identity. Their face is face swapped with another uh, online influencer and a new AI ID is created, which is sellable by these scammers online. They post such reels, they post such content and they earn money from the digital identity of that women. Deepfakes of politicians in India have been used to sway the electorate. The danger is real. The truth is, using the internet means having to accept a certain risk. There's no 100% effective way to prevent cybercrime. Unless that is, you plan on going off-grid entirely. So all we can do is take precautions and stay vigilant. How has cybercrime affected your life and how do you go about protecting your sensitive data? Let us know. Bye-bye.